Hey everybody, this is Tony and I'm here today with a special guest. I like to call her one of gospel's leading voices uh, of today's time. And of course, most of you probably saw her as a contestant on Sunday's Best, Miss Latisse Crawford. How are you today? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for asking. Um, how, has your, how has your mind and your mental health been? Uh, I know a lot of people forget to ask that question, especially with what's going on. So how is that? <laughs> I think, you know, it's, it's been up and down, just like everybody else is. Um, yeah. You know, when I've got my tools and I use them often. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That I stay in a good, you know, in a good place. Um, I tell people, God in therapy, make yes. sure you have both on hand. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, like I said earlier, a lot of people were introduced to you as a contestant on TV on Sunday Best, of course. Um, but today you've grown into a, a woman who is, is much more than what people saw on that screen, uh, I would like to think. And um, I want to talk about your project, The Cure, the EP, uh, if people haven't heard it. So it's, it's one of the projects that I really love. Uh, and I really listen to this all the way through. I listened to it a few times, matter of fact. Um, some of the songs on there just really just hit you, especially like all in all. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that you guys released a video as well earlier this year for that song. So please go check that out. Um, but where did the concept for this whole project come from as a whole? Um, it was very, this project was very metaphoric, you know, um, but, you know, it, it tied to a lot of different places in my life. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, when I was writing this project, that the I think it was around the time that they were talking about the uh, Time's Up, you know, stuff. And it was just a, very, a really big time for women, you yes. know, and I was kind of taking a stand against some of the things, you know, that, that have been happening to us. And I realized even in my life, even in religion, um, a lot of times Eve doesn't get the same grace that yes. we give David and Moses and all the other ones that fell short, you know, in the Bible. And, you know, and so, you know, even the cover um, why I'm standing by this tree and it's two sides of this tree is because, you know, um, we, we focus a lot on the place where she fell, you know, mm -hmm. and women till today are still choking on fruit that I ain't even eat. Like, I don't even <laughs> eat the fruit. So I'm so dumb on it. You know, but then there's this other side of the tree because later on in the Bible, it talks about God sending his son to die on a tree. And so, you know, just um, I wanted to really give something to encourage people that even though you have fallen, mm -hmm. you don't have to stay there. And even though, you know, you've fallen short, you don't have to continue to function there. There are two sides to this tree and we need you to walk on around, you know, to the other side, to the side of grace and the side of redemption and restoration. Um, and reconciliation with God. And, you know, ultimately he's the cure. You know, but there's so many things, you know, in life that we choose as pills, whether it's a relationship or, you know, alcohol or, you know, whatever it is, you know, that, that's your advice. But there is this cure that yes. once you have that, you don't need any of this other stuff. And so, you know, the songs are even, you know, metaphoric about that that stuff too. Um, you know, uh, my, both of my parents um, had passed. And so, you know, they oh, were wow, going through this battle. Yeah, thank you. This battle with sickness and fighting that and so um you know this season of my life was the first time I really had to believe in the game of death and the promise of heaven mm -hmm. and even that being the cure for what we can't fix down here so yeah like I said it was a whole lot of stuff mixed up in there <laughs> I love it I love it um but it, it's something people need to hear um and that's what I love when when artists really put real life into music and I don't just mean like I fell in love today and you know I, I want to make love songs uh that's nice don't get me wrong because we love those kind of songs in R&B but what I mean is when you can really put something to pen and paper and have somebody really connect with you on a deeper level than just something like that. And I can listen to this and say, oh, my God, this is changing my life. or Oh, my God, this is my situation. Or you're giving me some kind of inspiration in, in what you're saying just by, you know, singing this song. That's that's something totally different to me. Mm -hmm. That's on a different level. And, and that's what I love when, when an artist can really tap into that and do that to to really bring that to people in a different right way because you never know who you're helping you know what I'm saying you mm -hmm. never know who who's interpreting your music how they're interpreting it, all kind of things like you might have one thing in mind they might have something totally different but and, and the, for the most part though a lot of times a lot of us get the same message so I'm glad that you you put this um together and you you had all these different things that I'm not glad that they happened, but you had the experience to be able to put it there for other people who had that experience too. Let me put it like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to talk about uh, the songs on here specifically. So there's six tracks. Uh, the first one is an intro. Um, 
all in all, like I said, I love that. Something, something. I like that one too. Uh, just the way that you mixed in the old with the new. I love that. That's something got a hold on me. I love it. Uh, and then the cure, I, I have to mention that as well with just the message that you had in there. Uh, people, you know, popping pills and doing other different things uh, to try to cope and deal with life in, in situations. Mm -hmm. But God is the ultimate cure. So that is something that's so true. But you, it's crazy that we'll have something so simple that we won't even realize uh, until somebody does something like this. And you're like, oh, wow, I, I could have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. But I love this. Uh, did you write all the tracks on here? I did. I oh. did. Yeah. I love this. I love this. And then now the, the cover art. How did you come up with this? I, I know it came from experience, of course, but how did you even think to put it from here to on the uh, cover? Um, it was, you know, the same process as what I said about the project, you know, just the overall idea of it, just a starting in one place and ending in another. Yeah. Um, I knew that I wanted it to be very significant, you know, to uh, the beginning of the Bible and the end of the Bible, you know, mm. it, it, all this stuff in between. So the beginning starts with the fall, you know what I mean? The right. creation the fall. And then, you know, the ending will be our redemption of, you know, just to give people something to look at. I wanted, I definitely wanted two sides of this tree. Because I wanted to make people's minds go, hmm, okay, there's two sides to this. There's two sides uh -huh. to this. You know, in any case, you know, sometimes we see, you know, especially as believers, we see people on that rotten side of the tree, you know, right. and we hit them and we don't know what they believe and what they serve, but we judge them based on what we see. And then it's the same, you know, flip side for the people that are on the other side. They look mm -hmm. it up and they see this well put together person, not knowing that we all struggle with the same stuff. You know, we all started at that same tree. That's we right. All have the right to the redemption that's on the other side of that. And so, you know, like I said, I just wanted to make sure that I gave people something um, visually that they can yes. see and understand so that when they listen to the music, they really understood the messaging. Um, I wanted the questions. I wanted for people to go, I wonder what that was about. I wonder why she did that. <laughs> um, but it was like, the Eve was definitely very significant um, for me and something that I wanted to um, give her a little bit more of her story. You know, her story didn't end there, but a lot yes. of times that's where we have her. You know, yes. we don't realize, you know, all of the children and all of the things she birthed, you know, mm -hmm. out of what she left the garden. And so, like I said, I just wanted to really encourage people that, you know, don't let people leave you where they put the period at the end of your story. It's not the end for you. It's, it's more, right. it's more chapters. Um, and so, you know, yeah, that that's really what, what the um, cover art was about. Okay, okay. Well, wonderful story. I love that. And um, as far as the the singles or the, the songs, rather, are you planning to release uh, more videos as well for any of the other songs? Um, I don't think that we'll release any more videos for any of the other songs. Um, you know, I definitely think, you know, there are some more shows and some more things, you know, that'll be happening and, and getting done um, that will add to content. Um, yeah. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, we've got probably... I want to say we've got four videos. Like we've had videos, I think, to every song, with the exception really? of, um, with the exception of of um, the intro song. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Go on YouTube. Go go look those songs up. Yeah, we we got. I, I look, I gotta go on there. I gotta go with go with them. Yeah. <laughs> I did. But I did see the Cure, and I did see All in All, um, and I think, a matter of fact, I thought, think I saw something something as well. Yeah, we've got a visual. That's the one with you and you and the uh the guy in the video uh for something yep. something right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I did see that one as well. Uh, amazing. We have a sing. Oh, we have a visual for amazing. I'm in a red dress. Um, okay. and then we have a visual for your fault as well. It's like you're with me. Uh, yes. I want to dance with somebody ish. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love that. But you know what? Thank you. I want to say this to you. Thank you for being an example of not just what. Uh, a believer is, but not just being one way in being a believer, because you have, uh, to me, a different sound. Uh, you don't have a, a traditional gospel sound, of course. I'm sure you know that. But in what you sing and what you do, you still are able to reach people, give a message, and it still comes out the same way, but in your own, you know, uh, style. So thank you so much for being, mm -hmm. you know, yourself, but being able to be a believer so that people can see that people who believe in God aren't only just one way, or we don't all go to the same church, or we don't all wear the same clothes, or we don't all look the same way, you know? So thank, thank you. you so much for that. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. I think it's really important to me, you know, to make sure 
um, that I'm giving people the entire soundtrack of my life. You know, mm-hmm, I think when mm-hmm. we write these projects, I don't really try to focus on uh, sonically, you know, like, is this going to sound gospel enough or is it not? I, I really, you know, those, the songs and the, and the sounds that you hear from them come from the emotion of what yeah. I was dealing with you know, when those things happened, you know, like, so, you know, when you hear, um, the intro, you know, and it's just that mm, 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 it's not really any music behind it. It's because at that time when I was looking for God, it was a very lonely place and a lonely space. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to feel empty. I didn't want for too much to be happening. And then, you know, you've got the cure. It sounds very melancholy and, you know, low and, and it gets brighter as it goes because that's where the song started at. It started in this very dark place of me feeling strung out. I wasn't, you know, literally strung out, but feeling strung out on all of the pills, you know, that I was trying to, to fulfill a void that I couldn't do without God mm-hmm. and so you know I, I I think um you know like songs for me and my approach to music is not uh maybe I guess uh the same as other people's you know I, mm-hmm. I look at a lot of um, I love movies um not even so much the movie itself but I love scripts I love to watch a movie and then look at you know the, the place that the movie starts and then the place that it goes and to see and I love soundtracks too yes. I love to hear the music the score yes. That's what I love because I love to see how, like, wow, that really made that emotion. But if different music was put there, it may not have mm-hmm. felt that way. Maybe I wouldn't have felt scared if that. Da, 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 da. Exactly. You know, like, <laughs> so that's because the theater is like really, really big for me. So I don't really um, listen to like a lot of the music. So I, 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 not saying you know that's bad for anyone, but just for me, when I write a project, when I approach a project, I approach it as if I'm writing a movie script. What is the theme, and then how do I develop this theme throughout? you know, and change the scene. So I don't want for it to all sound the same or just be a compilation of good songs. I want a story. Yes, yes. I noticed that too in listening to this project and any any music that you have really, that you really do tell a story. You don't just give uh, like a blanket, uh, a statement or or just a song. You really do have a story in there. And that's what I love Mm -hmm. because people can relate to that so much more uh, especially, like I said, when you've been through something and you hear that in a song, you're like, oh my God, this is, this is me. <laughs> that, that, that's a different, you know what I'm saying? Then I, I listen to, uh, you know, Kirk Franklin stomp, you know, and that makes me feel good. Don't get me wrong. But when I listen to, uh, let's say all in all, I'm like, oh my God, I, this is what I'm sitting in. This is where I'm at. This is, yeah. you know, it's a totally different feeling. I think that, you know, something that is really important to me when I approach music is not just telling people that God is good, but telling them why, you know, he's good. And I think that's where the story aspect comes from. I have to tell this story, you know, people who are in church understand a certain language, but the Mm -hmm. people who are trying to get, like, I'm not trying to really reach a church person. You already know. And there's music there for you. My job is to reach the people who aren't there that we want to come and be a part of the body, you know, as well. And so, you know, I try to tell the story about how personally God was good to me so that Uh they'll say you know what you know and and that's really what you know this project was about it was a bridge or you know my intention was for it to be a bridge between a believer and non-believer to say you know we're all looking for a cure to something and the best way to get a cure is to go to a doctor you know what I mean um but understanding you know if I think if you know when you have a cold or when you're sick Mm -hmm. and you go on Google like to look up the symptoms (laughs) And, and, and in one way, it makes you fearful, like I need to get to the doctor if something's yes. really wrong. But in another way, it comforts you to know someone else has these symptoms and there is an right. answer to this problem and, you know, this issue and there is a solution to it. And so yes. I think that's what I wanted to do with this project. I wanted for people to look at my symptoms and go, oh, you know what? I have the same thing. Mm-hmm. I can look at stuff and then they'll look for my solution. Well, where does she go? And ultimately, you know, they'll find Jesus Christ. But yes. that was my hope that exactly. that came across <laughs> <laughs> it did it did definitely for me I know for sure so I know if it did for me it did for somebody else but you you done a great job in that aspect um and it's it's so important too that you do what you do um a lot of times people don't want to do something if they don't know somebody else who has done it or been through it or something yeah. you know what I'm saying a lot yeah. of times you'll, you'll even see that in just regular life stuff online uh, even like with somebody being married, they'll, they'll tell you, don't give me advice. You're not married. You know what I'm saying? You see that kind of stuff all the time. And, and, but we're more likely to do something. If, you know, you tell somebody, Hey, I went through this program and they do this, that, and the third, yep. that person will then think like, Oh, okay, well they did it work for them. All right, let me try it out. But if you just tell them about something, then it might be like, Oh, I don't know. I might do it. I might not. But 
if you say, hey, I went through this experience, this is what happened to me, here's what happened from beginning, middle, and end, yeah. they're like, oh, okay, all right. So it does actually work. Okay, so he is actually good. Okay, so he is a healer. All right, yeah. Th- that, that's how I go. <laughs> yes. So you, you're yes. absolutely right in that. I, I love that. I always tell people, uh, well, I don't always tell people, but some of the people that I have here to uh, do interviews with, uh, especially when we talk about mental health, I always talk about my own situation because I went through depression uh, very, very bad years ago. Um, but I, like I tell people all the time, I'm thankful for that experience because it led me through so much uh, uh, turmoil, yes, but it, it brought me um, so much closer to God because that was my safe uh, haven. That was my savior, really, yeah. truly, uh, during that time, even when I didn't have anybody else, uh, because I, I, of course, withdraw from people um, and, and everything else. So I, I didn't really talk to anybody, that kind of thing. And people don't understand, you know, when what what that kind of situation is like when you when your own head is against you, you know. So yep. I didn't have anybody in that moment, and I, I just had to have God in in myself alone, you know. And uh, I would have to listen to gospel music to keep encouraging myself because I didn't have anything else. So I'm like, I know this is not right. I know this is not the end. I know this is just a test. So let me mm-hmm. let me hold on to what I know best. And that is my faith. That's what I always knew. Uh, and that's what kept me. And that's what is, is keeping me today. Um, so thank God for that. But I always tell people I'm thankful for that experience because if I didn't go through it, I wouldn't know what it was. I wouldn't know what it was like. I wouldn't be uh, uh, as, I, as patient as I am today. I wouldn't be as understanding as I am because now I have a little more of that knowing what I went through. Oh yeah. So, oh, yeah. I, and and my faith, uh, I would say, got even stronger during that time. So I thank God for everything that has happened, uh, the wow. good and the bad, because that's what makes us who we are uh, as a whole. You can't just come through life and walk in and say, "Okay, I want all sunny days. I want all all the money I can get. I want <laughs> all the cars I can get." You can't do that. So if you if you never experienced a bad day, I put it like this: if you never experienced a bad day, you won't know what a good one feels like. It's true. It's true. It's so it's that's the way true. that's the way I like to put it. But I, I am a I am a, a a living testament. I say that to what God can do, and I always try to tell people that all the time. Sometimes they see me doing this kind of stuff, and they're like, "Oh, you're doing this, and you do." Even the people that I, you know, uh, grew up with, or live with, or uh, am family with, or whatever. And I'm like, you just don't know what I had to go through to to get here, though. That's the thing, and 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 I wish people would ask that question more as opposed to assuming, because if you just ask, we can tell you, it's not all roses and rainbows and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you, I had to go through this, that, and the third. But, you know, what your path is, is what your path is. But I'm just telling you what I went through. So Um, he is, he is good. I I can attest to that. Thank you, God, for that. And thank you for this day, for this moment, and for this conversation. Um, so I want to talk about mental health and in your uh, role as a life coach, since we we're talking about that already. Uh, so how did you get into doing that? Uh, did you start that before music or after you started music? Where did that come in at? Um, definitely uh, started uh, over the last few years. Um, mm-hmm. I had gotten certified in a few areas. I had first started with um, ecology modern okay. applied psychology and then I went back for psychology and then cognitive behavioral therapy and then neuro-linguistic programming, then emotional <laughs> intelligence. Like I do, I, I like information and I love education. And so I was just going back, you know, for myself and to okay. really, um, you know, uh, really be able to understand me and how to change some of the things that I was dealing with and going yeah. through some of my own traumas. I was really trying to get to the bottom of certain things. Why do I pick certain friends? Why do I pick certain men? Why do I pick certain, you know, why do I do these things? What, what yes. is it? What, what trauma is it that I'm not dealing with? I, I, I got tired of, of, of getting the same lesson, but not learning it. Uh-huh. Um, and I need to repeat the course over and over again. <laughs> so like if I just initially had done it for myself, um, starting in about 2018, and then um, uh, I had uh, come across a post of someone, I think, who was trying to do music. And um, they were just like, you know, I just, I, I can't really figure out, you know, who I am in this and, and why. And, you know, they had a lot of questions. So I just started talking with them, you know, about, um, you know, just taking time to just 
figure out where they stopped. You know yes. what I mean? I think yes. we all kind of stop at a certain age and we get stuck there. Mm-hmm. Then we start to function from that place. You know? yeah. So wherever that major trauma happened, we function from that place. So every decision we make, every mood we have, every, you know, bad character trait that we have, it all stems from that place. And so I started walking her through that, not even realizing that I was life coaching her. And then she signed on as an official client and then came whole life. It just kind of happened. It kind of just started. Um, but oddly enough, um, years ago, mm-hmm. I mean, when I was probably like maybe 14 or 15, um, I had told my mom that I had had this dream of this white building. It was this huge white building, but it was like a campus but it, I mean, it was huge. It had housing on it and, and all these buildings and I was creating work and I walked inside. It looked like a church, but I walked inside and I was like, well, who's still in this business? Where, like, where am I? And I, it, in a way, it, it resembled almost like a what you would think like a psych ward would look like, you know, with the white yeah. walls. Because it's the walls here, white walls. But, and everybody was walking around in white and everything else. Anyway, I walked outside and I looked on the building and it said whole life. And I was mm. like, what building is this? And I told her about it. And she said, well, maybe you're going to, you know, be a pastor or a first lady or something. And I was like, <laughs> no, thank you. I'm good. I don't want that. And, you know, here we are all these years, um, you know, later, um, you know, a good almost, you know, 30 years later, um, <laughs> 25 years, I think later. And, um, you know, uh, here it is, you know, a whole life. Yes. Um, didn't know what that was, but, um, you know, no, it's not a, it's not a psych ward, but it is a place and a safe haven for people to come to, to be well, you know what I mean? And to be whole. Um, I think that, um, that's a, a, another bridge to how we get people to come to Christ, you know, mm-hmm. people can't think for themselves or be well, you know, within their own mind. Like you say, feeling like your mind or your body's betraying you. If yeah. you can't think well, you can't be well, you know what I mean? That's so, right. That's um, right. Yeah. So, you know, that's what whole life is. And, and so I've been doing it now for about three years and um, I love it. It's, it's my passion. It's what I wake up and think, eat, breathe, sleep all day. Um, and so I'm creating a, a lot of events and courses and products and just a whole bunch of different things, um, you know, oh, for wow. it. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. I love it. Um, especially when people are doing uh, that's God's work to me. Um, just, just helping people in that kind of way. It's, it's one thing to be of service, but to be of service in that way, I love it. So I hope people go and check it. Do you have a website as well? Yes. Um, I'm, it's, it's being redesigned right now, but it's okay. latissecrawford.com. Um, so you guys can go to that and check it out. But um, I'll have some more stuff up there for whole life. So all the music stuff is there. So go over there and go get all that good stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. But I love, I love that though. So thank you so much for that. Um, I, I intended to go back to school soon. Matter of fact, for my uh, degree in uh, psychology as well. So uh, hopefully everything works out smoothly. Um, but I want to say this too, matter of fact, on what you just said, uh, as far as you saying somebody saying that you might be a, a preacher's wife or something like that. You know, it's funny that we don't realize that. <laughs> it's funny that we don't realize, though, you know, what, what people are trying to get across sometimes. And it's because and, I, and I'm saying this to say before, like when I was in middle school, people used to see me carry a Bible. So they used to, or Mm -hmm. they used to hear me saying certain things. And uh, I used to have one uh, young lady that was in a grade lower than me. And she used to always walk around and call me pastor every time she saw me. And I'm like, (laughs) why are you calling me pastor? Like, that's not what I want to (laughs) be. Because, and I used to, and I still say that right now, because I just feel like that's a responsibility I'm not here for. Mm -hmm. Um, You you have to understand that, you know, and now don't get me wrong. If God calls me and I have to answer, that's something different. But you, you have to understand that what, when you go for a position, things come with that, not just a title. You have to actually do things. Yeah. Uh, and you're held accountable for other people's lives. And that's something different. So I always tell people, don't, don't do that. You know, I, I, I say what I say and I speak the truth most of the time uh, out of life experiences, not just the Bible, but um, don't do that. So, but I think it may be in, in a way in, in learn, going through life that maybe it wasn't just the past as, as a, you know, one that's standing in front of a pool pit in front of people, but it might be something different Mm -hmm. in doing this kind of thing, or even just telling people about my experience in life with depression or, you know, mental health as a whole, or, you know, just that kind of thing. So sometimes we, we don't, we don't really realize that as, you know, as it is at the time, but it it just may be something different uh, later on. So I'm starting to learn that as well. So I just want to put that out there for people who might not know. Well, thank you for that. I mean, I I definitely, 
really feel like what I do is, is a ministry, you know, um, yeah. you know, music, music, you know, it, it's, it's allowed me to reach a lot of people. It's allowed me to minister to a lot of people, you know, but there is a, a business side to it, you know, when you right. are an artist, you know, and so sometimes, you know, you're not necessarily just creating the music, you know, mm-hmm. that people you're creating the music that's popular and the music that, you know, people want to hear because that's the business of it. You have to make right. money from it or you won't have a deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, you know, I think with the life coaching thing, it really freely allows yeah. me to minister to people and to not have to worry about um, it being popular, you know, right. or being the go-to thing. Um, it really just like the, the work um speaks for itself you know and so I think that's the part that I enjoy about it more is that while yes it is you know a business I'm running um it's pure its intention is is straightforward you know it is here to help you heal Mm -hmm. and to help you you know hopefully to get closer to the one that created you um and so you know that that's what creates the passion in it for me is that it's the one thing that I can do that um you know that I feel like I'm really good at you know that I can really lead people to a place of wellness um yes. and wholeness um and yes. really focus on the person yeah, yeah instead of a check or you know fame it doesn't right matter. right because yeah. people don't understand sometimes you can do what you love but at the end of the day if if the light people call or the, or the car payment people call or whoever it right. is right. you need to be able to answer that phone and say hold on yeah. let me let me yeah. give you this card number yeah exactly <laughs> you know exactly. i want to do what i love but at the same time i need to be able to pay these bills um but let me say this for people who are watching or will watch this though if you are operating in your purpose i truly believe that god will make a way for you no matter what um, let me just put that out there, even though we're, I'm, I'm joking, but you know, that is true. That is real. <laughs> so, um, I just want to go back to music though, a little bit. Um, I want to see, I was excited and proud to see you. Matter of fact, when you did the, uh, black music honors, the, the tribute to Olita Adams a few years ago, uh, singing holy as the lamb. I love that performance that you did. I, I truly love that. And when you sing, it's something about your voice that's really, really unique. It's not like any other singer that I can hear. Um, and I noticed that you got vocally stronger as well. So I don't, are you doing some kind of training or have you been doing some kind of training over the years as well? Um, oddly enough, um, I, I haven't been doing a lot of vocal training, but I've been doing a lot of breath work. Um, mm. I think that, you know, people really do not realize how important that breath work is. Um, yes. You know, and so I spend a lot of time just, you know, doing breathing, um, breathing exercises, uh, meditations, um, breathe, you know, breathing meditations. I'm not chanting and doing that. Like that. <laughs> you know, meaning intentional breathing, intentional internalizing. Um, but I think, too, um, now I think I think more. Mm-hmm. about what I'm going to sing and, and 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 the notes and the keys and you know all those different things um so I won't say necessarily stronger but I will say more more wiser and more okay. intentional in what um what I know my voice is capable of doing yes. um, and not burning it out making sure that I'm you know resting it when I need yes. to um finding different ways to sing mm-hmm. from different places and different spaces um and um yeah that's that's really what I've been more so working on it yes yes but you you definitely wise I can tell that uh because a lot of a lot of people um aren't aware of their voices uh and what I mean by that is sometimes you you can hear somebody start in, in a key that's already up here and, and you have nowhere else to go now because <laughs> you already started so high so you have to know where where, you, where you're going uh right. you have to know your voice so a lot of times it doesn't take yelling or screaming or being loud just to even get the message across you can whisper it a lot of times and it can get, get across depending on what it is. Right. 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 <laughs> so you, you just have to know how, how your voice works. And a lot of people don't realize that. Like, for instance, Kim Burrell can't sing uh, up that high, but she does these runs. She knows how to do, work she her voice. To, yep. She, she knows, knows how, how to do what she does. Here, but get there. Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I definitely will say she's she's one of those people that um, I, I value so much of. Not not because of her skill, not not because of her skill in that, but because she is a thinker when she yes. sings. You know, I think yes. people just think this stuff comes out. Kimberell is very very technical, you know, in yes. what she's doing and in her thought process of what she's doing, and she knows her voice well. She's mm-hmm. a musician. What she does, unfortunately, I'm not a musician, you know. <laughs> but I tell people all the time, I'm not the greatest singer in the world. There are people who can out sing me and sing me under a table but I am great at what I do and that's I know right what works for me and I know what my 
our limitation is and what That's it's right. not. And I think that when you, you know, uh, when I was on Sunday Best, uh, Donald Lawrence was my mentor. Right. And, you know, even after that, you know, he kind of uh, would talk with me and we'd have, you know, great conversations. And he brought up um, C.C. Winans to me. He would always bring up C.C. Winans and say, you know, C.C. doesn't do a whole lot. You know, her, her range is not necessarily crazy, but C.C. has perfected what yes. she does. And no yes. one else can do it the way that C.C. does. So when C.C. Winans sings a song, you're like, oh my gosh. And yes. she ain't screaming, she ain't growled, she ain't sung in the heavens. She's <laughs> like, I'm right here and I'm a coach right here. But she yes. knows her gift so well. Even in the song she chooses to record, she mm-hmm. understands that. So that's what I've been trying to be more intentional about. Understanding like, what is the Latisse Crawford sound? What sounds, you know, good? What do you do? You know, yeah. well, and, and I think even becoming, I think now too, I'm, I'm more comfortable in the, the, the tone of my voice before, yes. you know, I used to be really, really a high soprano. And so for a long time, it, it, it bothered me that I couldn't do, you know, those things. But now I realize like, I, I got to accept the rest. It's just a part, right. nothing's wrong with my voice, it's just a part <laughs> of it. And um, so I've been, you know, working that a lot. Um, but yeah, I think that that's really what it is. It's just being comfortable in your gift and being confident in it where you don't feel like you have to prove anything to anybody. I don't have to overdo it anymore. I'm too old uh-huh. to try to overdo anything. <laughs> I'm full of tomorrow. You know what I mean? I don't, feel, I don't need to overdo anything. I am confident in who I am and the mark that I have made in this yes. you know, music business and industry and in my music and in my sound. Um and in my skill set. And so, um, you know, that's not conceited. That's that's confidence, you know, when you're doing a while, you know. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, just really taking the time to get to know yourself. And that's why I said, I don't, I think, I think overall, I'm stronger mentally, emotionally, physically, um, spiritually. And I think that that's what people are is seeing resonate, you know. It has nothing to do with the vocal ability. It's just when you, when you can stand somewhere and know, this is what I do. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. People, people can see that and feel that. They can. They can definitely. And I, I think uh, a lot of singers sometimes don't realize, too, that your emotional connection to a song also shows when you sing. And uh, I just told somebody this the other day. I don't I don't remember who that was. Um, but sometimes you don't realize as a singer, you're really acting. You put it on a road. You know, when you're singing a song, especially if it has nothing to do with you. So you, you really are acting in that moment. But sometimes when you have like a commo- uh, commotional, uh, emotional connection <laughs> to a song, that really shows it exudes out of you because I can see this is coming from a real place. I know that even if this is not your song that's written by you or it is your song, I can see that this is your situation that you really know something about because of the way you're singing it. So mm-hmm. they don't understand a lot of times, or I won't say they, some people don't understand sometimes that that shows in your performance. Um, just that alone will, will help you uh, throughout that performance by itself, even if you mess up, because sometimes just being real shows enough for people to be like, you know what, I, I didn't even hear that. I, I'm focused on this message right now. <laughs> yeah, so, I think that is important. Um, you know, I say there are some singers who could just sing anything. Leandra Johnson can sing. Oh, and, yes. And it just yes. be like there's a window over there and you'd be like sing that <laughs> she'll sing it and just kill it you know 10 out of five. I'm not one of the people I, I can sing well but I feel like that for me when I hear a song I have to understand the emotion behind it you know what, yes. the emotion, what are the lyrics saying and then I can you know sing it from that place of what it is you know what I mean um, that's right so I'm definitely I will say a more technical singer than what people may think I think, mm-hmm. I think I can just get up there and sing anything. Um, but no, as long as I understand the emotion of it, I can, um, like I said, I take a very theatrical approach um, and, you know, movie type of approach to yes. even when I, when I do sing. Um, so I'm seeing it, I'm visualizing it, you know, what a lot of times when I have to sing a song, I'm writing down the breakdown of it. Okay, so in this part, I need to be this way. My voice mm-hmm. needs to be this. I write out almost like my own scene of what the song is. And then when, especially when it's <laughs> someone else's song, but that's how I write a lot of my songs too. I, before they're ever written, I dream them. And I see myself mm. in the place that I need to be in for the song to make sense. And when I wake up, the lyrics are there. I very rarely write a song down. It's usually here based on a picture, based on something that I've seen. So, um, yeah, that's how I approach other people's songs, too. You know, I'm closing my eyes and I'm, okay. It helps me remember the lyrics, too. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, I, I realize that it's so easy to forget. Um, I, I don't, I don't sing like that. I used to sing in choir, but now, you know, I do like funerals here and there, stuff like that. And uh, I had to do my cousin's funeral like in December. 
And I tell you no lie because of the, I was so focused on what was going on that I forgot all, oh. every single word. And this was a song, and I did um, Walter Hawkins, Thank You, Lord. And that's a song I listen to religiously because I love it. But I, I completely forgot everything went out of the window. So I, I understand how it is, easy it is to forget. Um, man, that's crazy. But yeah, speaking of artists, matter of fact, I just got to mention this, of artists that just stay in the pocket in their range um, as well. Like Even in R&B, it's Gladys Knight, I always like to mention. Yeah. People don't realize that all these different songs that Gladys has sung and even different genres, she still had the same voice, but she knows how to use her voice. Yeah. Uh, she never once did a Whitney note, but she still got her message across, okay. and it sounds just the same. Tony so, Braxton, Erica Campbell, like, um, what's the other one? Um, um, Anita Baker, like, that's all right. of them are like masters of their 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 own tone and their, yes. their keys, you know, that they sing in, in comfortably. Like, you know, I, I've listened to um, you know, Erica's albums, Erica Campbell's albums, and I'm like, wow, like she she doesn't she don't really have to do a whole lot, but it's a whole lot no. there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like in within that song. Um as I said, I think that it's it's um something that's that's very important for people, you know, and so for those who are listening, if I can encourage you is to understand your own artistry. Mm -hmm. Don't come in here trying to be, you know, like somebody else or trying to sound like someone else. It's good to have influence, you know, but really under make sure you understand your own sound. And that's you know, literally and metaphorically that you understand who you want to be as yes. an artist and what you want for, you know, for your message to be and what you want for your sound to be, um, you know, and that's not meaning like genre sound, but like literally the sound of your voice. What do you mm -hmm. want that to be? And really standing firm on that, you know, because like I said, this industry is very, very um, bent on a lot of times of, of just keeping what is already working. You know that's what right. I mean? That's um, right. You know, so it, I know it's not as easy of a road to be an individual and to be different, you know, and to kind of go against the norm and the grain. But um, you're going to feel so much more rewarded um, yes. if you um, are honest, you know, to yourself. Like I said, I, I may not necessarily uh, uh, be in the rankings of someone else, but <laughs> anytime someone hears me, they can always tell you Latisse always sounds like Latisse. That's and right. Latisse is going to be Latisse. That's um, right. And, and, you know, I think uh, it, it helps you to stand out, you know, um, to the people who are buying your projects and the people mm -hmm. who are buying your records um, and uh, just staying true to your message. So I just wanted to throw that little tidbit in there. You know, this, I know this industry can be a little intimidating for those that are coming into it. But, you know, if you take nothing else away from anything else that I said, make sure that you go in sure of yourself because um, that's how you're going to survive. That's right. Absolutely. You spoke a, or spoke a whole word. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I'm going to let you go. I got to just touch on a few things really quick. Um, I have to mention your past projects as well. Diver Church Girl uh, EP uh, and your first album, Tease Crawford, self the title. Um, and I have to mention, of course, Sunday Best, as we did in the beginning, because I have to, because people are going to say, why didn't you do that? <laughs> why? <laughs> Um, but let me just say, as an artist, uh, uh, overall, um, just seeing your journey and everything, uh, I noticed people saying, you should have been bigger. Why? I, I feel like, you know, you should have been this kind of artist and that kind of artist. Uh, do you ever feel that way yourself or, you know, or do you just have a feeling of I'm content with what I've done and what I'm doing as far as music is concerned? I think it's a little different for me because I never, this isn't any, none of this is what I ever wanted. You know, okay. I was, I was not looking to be a recording arts. I went to Sunday Best for people to leave me alone. You know, singing was not <laughs> something I wanted to do. It was something I did well. Yes. Um, and I think because of that, you know, people felt like, oh, you know, well, then you should go, you know, and do something with it and be famous with it. It's the same equivalent. If you're tall, you should be a model. If you, you know, play basketball, <laughs> you should be a basketball star. You know, so it wasn't my goal or intention. And I think for a long time, you know, I was like kind of living in other people's dream for me, you know, and, yeah. I, and, and I, that's why I said, I don't think I was being as intentional with what I wanted to say and who I wanted to be in the industry because I didn't know. I was literally just doing this because it's what kept coming. It's what kept being dropped in my lap. It's where I kept being, being successful at. Um, mm -hmm. I think at this point in time in my life, I'm just kind of like, you know what? I don't, it's not really, I don't, it's not my goal to be famous. If that comes along with it, cool. You know what I mean? Um, right. I want to be wealthy. And I think that um, because my, my, desire and vision on it has changed I feel wealthy you know now mm. I, I, I feel happy I feel at peace I, yes. I am thankful I think when you get to a certain point 
in any career, um, there are sacrifices that have to be made. And I've made those sacrifices. You know, I'll be 40 in another two or so weeks. And, you know, in this pandemic, you know, after you lose two parents and when you, um, you know, are facing possible death every time you walk out that door from someone coughing on you, you know, mm -hmm. or any, yeah. whatever the, you know, coronavirus thing was, I think you sit and you think and you ask yourself if I only have 20 more years. I lost both my parents very young. They were in their 60s. And I think wow. you ask yourself as you're approaching 40, like, do I want to be doing this for 20 more years? You know, what does, what do I want my life to look like? Right. 20 years, you know, and right. what will be important to me. And that time that I got with my son in this pandemic was the most valuable thing in the world to me. So I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And if God has more for me, then I'll get that. But we're not starving. You know, I'm not looking for, for, for money. Um, I'm, I'm not looking for a place to live. You know right. what I mean? I'm, I'm wealthy and, I'm, and, I, and I mean that internally. My, my yes, mental yes. and emotional well-being is well. And wealthy. Yes. And so I'm okay. You know, I think people want more for me than I may desire, you know, for, for myself. <laughs> uh, and I think that's okay. You know, I hear people say all the time, oh, you should have been doing this. You should be here. You should be here. And I'm like, no, because technically I shouldn't even be here. Right. So many decisions <laughs> that I've made that should have taken me out, you know, with yes. God, God has been gracious to me and the amount that I have been able to accomplish without even wanting it. You know what I mean? I mm -hmm. think that um, that shows and proves what God can do. And, um, you know, before he had to give me fish, but now I know how to fish. And so I'm okay. You know, and I'm, right. good and I'm thankful for where I am and what I've accomplished and what I've done. And I know there's more, you know, and I'm just yeah. looking forward to what he has for me to walk in. But That's I right. am, um, yeah, I'm good. So y'all don't worry about me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing more people. You know, think, you know, that's what I said. It's, it's the difference between having to be famous and being, you know, wealthy and, and, and financially stable. Right. And I think that people don't realize there's a lot more to do in this music world than just being on somebody's TV screen. So when you don't see me, it's because I'm working and I'm making yeah. that money. You know what I mean? I knew that's right. <laughs> Like I said, don't, don't, please don't worry about me. I'm, I'm doing a lot more that I just don't show and post because it's for me. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Well, thank God for that. I, I love that. Um, really quickly, I just want to ask, as far as the experience that you had overall on Sunday's Best, since you just said that's something you did to shut people up, uh, was it ever uh, difficult for you to go through the process because you didn't really want to do it for yourself? No, not really. I, I mean, Sunday Best was, was my experience on Sunday Best was a beautiful experience. We were only there for two weeks, but it was the greatest two weeks of my life. It was... Yeah. So eye opening and just really seeing and understanding how much work goes into this music industry. You know, we can look at it, you know, from afar and be like, oh, they're just living a life, you know, and it's this glitz and glamour. No, we work and we work right. hard and being able to see all that took place behind the scenes and to learn and glean from these other artists. Oh, it was it was an amazing experience. I, I definitely um, wouldn't change anything. I absolutely wouldn't change a thing about my experience. There. I had a great time. Wow. Okay. I love when that. I do it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I understand. Would you try anything at all dealing with a singing competition show? If you could like, let's say go behind the camera, would you do that? I think, yeah, I, I would judge, you know, mm -hmm. one, um, I would be a mentor for one, um, you know, an emotional support, you know, cause it's hard. It's, it's not easy, you know, going through that and being told no or being rejected or sent yes. home. You know? So I think just that emotional support, absolutely. Um, and just, you know, standing by the artists that are up and coming, I absolutely would do that. But when I compete, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you, but I can't keep you long. So I got to just mention again, the, um, EP, the cure EP, mm -hmm. uh, is available now on all streaming platforms. Please make sure you guys go and check that out. Uh, and just let people know where they can find you on social media and your website again as well. You all can find me if you look for Latisse Crawford. I know y'all want to look for Latrice and put that R in there. <laughs> she ain't me. I am L-A-T-I-C-E Crawford. Look for me and you'll find all my social media um, uh, handles as well as my website. Okay. Sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is none other than Ms. Latisse Crawford herself. Thank you again. Thank you.